this afternoon we've come down to try and re-find the Nzanzeni female and her two cubs. She was seen this morning having caught a python and between the three of them they were feeding on it. We can see the two cubs but there's no signs of where the mother is. They need to be keeping an eye out for any danger. The wind's blowing, so the grass is rustling, the leaves are rustling. They're just waiting here whilst their mother has gone off, probably to go and rest somewhere else or potentially go off and hunt and see what else she can provide for them. But I'm sure knowing these cubs, they're young, they're playful, they're probably going to get out and about and start trying to see what they can do themselves. then found themselves resting up on a beautiful boulder playing with each other. I guess that's one great thing about cubs and having a sibling is they're then able to play with each other developing those skills that they're going to need for later on in life and also I guess providing a bit of entertainment for each other. Their patience is worn thin with their mother coming back to collect them. So they've taken it upon themselves to try and fetch some dinner. Stalking off to the side here, going after a few Spurfowl and Franklin. up into the tree trying to get the spine or the skeleton left from the python and it looks as though there's absolutely nothing left for them to eat there. Together they've just been playing around here, biting each other's tails and wrestling a little bit. So what we're hoping for is for both of these two cubs to survive because they're coming from the direct lineage of the mother leopard. They're essentially Londolosi royalty and how we track that is through the female's bloodline because we can guarantee and determine exactly who the mother is. However, it's not an exact science with who the father is unless we do DNA tests and that's going to get costly and a little bit impractical. So if these two cubs survive, they will essentially then pass on that mother leopard lineage. And so with the young male, he'll most likely move out of the area if he survives. But with the female, she will probably set up a territory somewhere close by here. Her mother will normally give up a small portion of the territory while the young female is then trying to establish herself. And then from there, she'll expand her territory. So 
It's been a great afternoon and I guess without the mother being around here we're going to leave them and see what else we can go and find. Just come across one of the water holes on the reserve and there's a few giraffes that are looking pretty desperate for a drink but there's two hyenas lying off to the side and so with the hyenas being around the giraffe are pretty nervous because when they drink they have to spread their legs pretty wide bend their head right down to pretty much below their feet in order to be able to drink so you can imagine how vulnerable they are when they're in that position and with the hyenas being around that just adds an extra risk They're quite nervous, but what's hilarious is the giraffe's dangling its tongue out of its mouth. I don't know if that's because it's really thirsty or it's actually just having a bit of fun and entertaining itself with its tongue. This is getting blown away in the wind. I'm hoping for the giraffe's sake that they're able to actually get a drink. Because their necks are so long, their exhalation has actually got very little moisture content in it, helping them conserve as much water as possible, meaning that they have to drink uh, less frequently, as well as they get a lot of their moisture requirements from all the leaves that they eat. So it's not vital for them to actually get a drink, but it has been a very hot day today, and so I'm sure they're just pretty thirsty. Looks as though the giraffe have given up on this attempt of having a drink. Hyenas are fast asleep here and I'm sure they will be for quite some time. So the giraffe have moved off into the distance. But you'll probably find they'll come back a little bit later on hoping that the hyenas have then moved on. But speaking of which, we're going to carry on, see what else we can find this afternoon. evening as it's getting dark we're sitting with the two evoca males directly north of Vati camp. What we're hoping for is them to both lift their heads up maybe get a nice backlit shot and hopefully have them both calling advertising that this is their territory. So we're halfway there, one of the males has got his head up, it's getting dark, so it's going to provide some great opportunities to get some backlit shots here. As we say that the second male's just lifted his head up now.
shortly after they both lifted their heads, the ones got up and started walking, being followed by the second male, who appears to still be limping after that battle with the Birmingham males a few months ago. And so it doesn't appear as though that's healed. Hasn't been life-threatening to him just yet, but let's hope he gets better in the next coming months. It's interesting now that they are right here in the middle of Londolozi and calling. I guess they're just advertising their territory. <laughs> That's been phenomenal. We got more than we asked for. We wanted just a backlit lion sitting up, but we got a backlit lion calling, so it's not going to get much better than that. I reckon let's call it quits there. So we arrived just in time as these two lions were mating. And what's fascinating is it's an evoker male and an Ensevu female and they're way down in the central parts of Londolozi. We haven't yet seen the evoker males come this far south and what's interesting about this is when felines or cats are mating it's often a very noisy affair and so if any of the Birminghams are within earshot of this they're most likely going to come across and investigate and so we don't know exactly where the brother of this evoker male is but we know last night they were together and so he's probably not too far away so it'll just be interesting to see what turn of events occurs here because they're right down here in the Birmingham's territory but I guess maybe it just comes down to the confidence of the evoker males and they're trying to push their territorial boundaries a bit further south and essentially gaining further and further into the Birmingham's territory but incredible nonetheless to just see them mating and we'll probably come back in the morning and see if we can try and find them again <laughs> 